It's good, y'all. Dr. Trehana. So you were just getting your yearly physical, right? You wasn't thinking nothing of it. But then after you went ahead and got your little results, you came to realize or your doctor went ahead and broke the news to you that you are now officially pre-diabetic, okay? So today, we're going to cover is why did that seem like that you became pre-diabetic out of nowhere, okay? And here are the things necessary so you can go ahead and get back into a healthier metabolic state, all right? Now, what a lot of people don't know when it comes to diabetes, right? It takes time for this to happen. Diabetes is a lifestyle disease, all right? It's actually a disease of influence or affluence. And why do I say that? So if you just look back in human history, right, people used to die from starvation, but ironically, diabetes, now people are dying from overeating. Look at that, 21st century stuff, okay? This is the problem that we are literally dealing with. It's literally called basically the plague of prosperity, all right? Because we are overeating, overindulging, right? Now we're having more metabolic issues in our body, all right? Now, when it comes to diabetes, what diabetes is, you just got too much blood sugar flowing throughout your system, all right? And the reason why this is happening now is because insulin is not working. What is insulin? Insulin is basically a hormone that's produced from the pancreas, okay? Right around your liver area, all right? And the main job of insulin is to basically help control the blood sugar and your bloodstream, all right? So any single time you eat something that has a lot of sugar in it, a lot of carbs in it, your body's able to handle it here and there, right? But through time, it's going to get weaker and weaker body's not receiving this signal or your cells is not receiving this signal, guess what? The uh, sugar in your bloodstream is just going rampant, all right? And that's going to cause a lot of stress, a lot of inflammation, a lot of oxidation, okay? And basically, inflammation, you already know, that's basically when your immune system got to get involved because it's basically damaging your arteries, your cells, etc. okay? And think of oxidation as rusting, right? So, for instance, if you see an apple and you leave it out, you're going to see it magically start turning brown, right? If you leave your bike in the rain, you're going to start to see rust on it, okay? So, what it's basically doing is basically destroying the cell, okay? Or the cell's not gonna be able to work as efficiently, all right? Now, what's happening is, even if you decide to eat, you know, carbs here and there, or you even a carb-based diet, for years upon end, your body's able to handle this, okay? But ultimately, it's not supposed to be handling this all day long throughout the course of five to 10 years years, okay? So when you look at the average standard American diet, which is called the SAD diet for a reason, right? What's happening is every single meal that you literally think of, it consists of what? It consists of some carbs, right? You might have some fruit juice, right? You might have some bread, right? And you're not only doing this one time a day, you're doing this four to five times a day. You're having your little breakfast. Then you might have a little snack, little fruit snacks, right? Then you have your lunch. Then you might have a little smoothie to hold you over some fruit to hold you over for dinner. And you know for dinner, you're going to have a starch, a vegetable, and a protein, right? But because majority of the meals that you're having and majority of what you're having has a lot of sugar in it or carbs in it, right? Your body has to work harder day in and day out. This is the only time in human history where we had this much access to carbs in the first place. Okay, because majority of the carbs that you are literally consuming, right, are man made. Okay, or they had to be refined or had to be created in somebody's laboratory. All right, back in the day, we wasn't really eating a whole bunch of Brussels sprouts and broccoli and little things like that. And believe it or not, broccoli is a man made vegetable. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna come to realize very soon that. Where our body within itself is not made to have a whole lot of carbs, but it can handle it here and there, okay? But you having carbs from broccoli is totally different from you having carbs from rice, or you having carbs from bread, or you having carbs from Cinnamon Toast Crunch, all right? So if you're spiking, or every single time you eat a carb, insulin gets spiked, right? Now, I tell my clients, it's not how much food you eat that gets people fat, it's the frequency, why? Because now if your insulin is getting spiked four to five times a day, that means your body is working four to five times harder than it has to. If your body like a car, it's basically a machine. That's what your body is. It's literally a machine, okay? It only will do what you tell it to do, all right? Now, when you have a used car, right, you might you might know that the starter might go out with um, at one point in time, right? 
you might have to get a new set of tires, right? But after the transmission goes out, after the engine goes out, right? Then it's time to get a brand new vehicle, right? Basically, that's exactly happening in your body. So what's happening is your body's able to handle this sugar here and there, experts, right? But because you was taught to basically eat four to five times a day, and majority of the food that you're eating are carb-based, and our body's not able to, it's not accustomed to that, long story short, basically you're putting your body in predicament where it's working harder than it has to, right? And things start to go wrong, literally, okay? Just like any machinery. Through use, something's gonna go wrong sooner or later, okay? And then you have to fine tune it, or then you have to go ahead and get it, you know, a tune up or whatever. What's happening in your body is your body's producing this insulin, right? But because you continue to spike the insulin in your body, your body's thinking, hey, something is obviously wrong, right? Because we're receiving too much energy and too much of the energy that we really do not need. There's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate, okay? Which means your body doesn't need carbs, especially not the carbs that we give it. Your body can create its own source of sugar through a process called gluconeogenesis, okay? And believe it or not, it can get it from fat. This fat that's on your body, okay? Not that. Um, so because you continue to give your body a whole lot of carbs, your body say, you know what? F it, all right? Obviously, this person's not listening. Um, we're going to start to become resistant to this insulin, okay? Because too much insulin to a cell can kill it, literally, all right? So because your cells are not taking in this energy or this blood sugar, now, once again, the uh, sugar in your blood is just going rampant, and it's destroying your arteries, it's destroying your tissues, it's destroying your organs. That's the start to pre-diabetes. That's exactly what pre-diabetes means. You got too much sugar in your bloodstream because insulin is not being produced as much anymore or it's being produced a lot, right? And it was able to suppress the blood sugar for a year upon end, but it can't do it for 30 years, all right? And you've been eating this way for 30 years, all right? So what you need to do, if you're somebody who starts to become pre-diabetic out of nowhere, you have to cut out the starches, you got to cut out the sugary carbs, you got to cut out the sugar. Simple, okay? And just to give you an idea of exactly what I mean, right? So I just ordered, um, because I'm still on vacation, all right? I just literally got back uh, to Maryland, but I'm still on quote-unquote vacation, right? And just to show y'all exactly what they provided to me for an average meal, right? And this is first watch. This is considered a healthier option in Maryland, right? Let's go ahead and look at what they give you for one meal, okay? I paid about $15 for this, okay? They gave you bacon, okay? We already know bacon is protein, right? Good. Cheesy grits. This is a grain, okay? So this is nothing but carbs right here with cheese on top, all right? So one carb, one protein, right? Fruit, right? Pineapples and grapes. That is cool. Fruit is fruit, right? But at the end of the day, you're not supposed to be having fruit every single day. My clients already know that, right? But once again, fruits are carbs. Cool. A tortilla wrap, right? And once again, I'm showing you the healthier option. This was in the healthy section, right? But the bread is a what? That is a carb, right? So once again, I literally just named off one protein and so far, three different carbs, right? Nine times out of 10, what are you going to be drinking? Fruit juice, right? Ironically, this is my mom's house, right? So she got the diet ones because I made her switch it out, right? But at the end of the day, at your mom's house, they probably got the regular version, right? And this is nothing but carbs. Just like even though this is a diet version, it's still a carb-based product. So I got four carbs, which means my insulin is being secreted right now once I start to eat, uh, consume this food, right? And one protein, right? And basically, my body's working way harder than it has to. But because I'm not pre-diabetic yet, right, my insulin is able to basically suppress it. But if I continue to do this, like the average American, they do this four to five times a day. Their meals look like that, right? Later during the day, you're going to have that chicken, that rice and broccoli, right? Earlier during the day, you're going to have that smoothie. Later during the day, you're going to have some Belvita, the little uh, cookies for lunch, right? As a snack, right? You go out and you get some Hershey Kisses, right? Um, at the little, you know, at your doctor's office. Then your insulin is being secreted all day long, right? And your basically your pancreas just gives out and says, you know what? Um, we're not going to be producing enough insulin. And now your blood sugar is creeping up, 
right? So once again, it's not because you had one bad year. It's not because you had three bad years. It's really after five to 10 years where your blood sugar starts to creep up. So that means throughout your lifestyle for almost a decade, this uh, actually starts to become a problem, all right? So what you need to do in order for you to reverse your prediabetes, because once again, just so you have an idea, two out of three people who have a heart attack are diabetic. And two out of three people who has a heart attack, right? Believe it or not, majority of people is undiagnosed with prediabetes, which means what? If you know you don't have an issue or you don't even know if you have an issue, then you can't do nothing to solve the problem because you think you're good. <laughs> and so what I want you to do is make sure that you're eating the better version of all the carbs. So what I usually tell my clients, if it honestly has more than five grams of carbs of sugar per serving, you don't want it. All right, especially when it's when it comes to sugar, right? And that's when you're gonna come to realize that a lot of the stuff that you have in your house, you're gonna have to cut out, right? Like, once again, this is my parents' house. My parents love soda, but if you actually look at the soda, this soda literally has 58 grams of carbs, 58 grams of sugar for one bottle. One bottle. Now, how many times you ever seen somebody just drink probably one soda a day, right? So it's little things that accrue to a problem through time, all right? But ignorance is bliss until you're not ignorant anymore. If you don't know you have a problem, right? You don't know that, hey, you're not supposed to be eating everything carb-based um, day upon day, right? Um, and every single meal, you're going to continue to do it, right? And that's why a majority of African-Americans have problems with hypertension, which is high blood pressure, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. All of these things are due to your diet. Your nutritional intake, okay? So, in order to resolve your prediabetes, you got to cut out the crazy carbs, okay? So, what I want you to do, you want some juice? Get the diet juice. You want some uh, soda? Get the diet Pepsi. Get the diet Dr. Pepper, okay? You can have things like this here and there, but because you're prediabetic, you have way less wiggle room than somebody who is not prediabetic right? That's like somebody having a used old beat up car versus somebody got a newer car. I can do a little bit more crazy things in my newer car than your old beat up car. So you got to get your body back into a healthier metabolic state. Then you're going to be good. Okay. But you got to get there first. It's going to take time. It might take about two or three months, but you have to dedicate yourself because at the end of the day, once you have diabetes, that's the start to all chronic diseases, cancer, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, which is a silent killer, okay? So you need to go ahead and fix this issue now, all right? What I want you to do, really focus on not having a lot of beans, a lot of corn, a lot of bread, a lot of rice, a lot of processed foods, a lot of sugars. That's all I need you to do, okay? And if you want to drink something, drink something that has less calories. I tell my clients all the time, don't eat your cal I mean, do not drink your calories, eat your calories, okay? So hopefully y'all learned something today. Once again, cut out the starches, cut out the carbs, okay? And you're going to come to realize that you're not going to be pre-diabetic anymore, okay? Because your body is able to handle protein. Your body is able to handle fat. Your body wasn't made to handle a whole lot of these, okay? Hope y'all learned something today. And that's your reset tip of the day. It's going to help you stay snatched all the time, not only sometime. Talk to y'all soon.